Okay. So these systems of equations, they, they each have two equations in the system, right? And their solution will be like the answer for both. So like, for example, like your solution is going to be an ordered pair, like an x and a y. That's supposed to be a y. It's going to be an x and a y that works for both equations, that makes both true. So whenever it says, if it says solve a system of equations, you're looking for an ordered pair that's true for both. And there's three, well, it's like getting all funky in it. There's like three basic ways to solve them. Uh, elimination, substitution, and graphing. And it doesn't matter, like, it doesn't matter which one you do. Unless it says. Like, if it was a test and it said use substitution, then you have to use substitution. On the quiz you're going to take for me when we do this, I won't care which way you do it. But if you, if substitution's easy and you try elimination, it's going to take you a long time, you might run out of time. So you have to know all three ways. All right. So do you guys know the kind of the giveaway for elimination, like what would make this way easiest? No? So check this out. Do you see the coefficient for y is negative 2 right here? Do you see that? And the coefficient for the other y is positive 2. So when I literally just add these two equations together, those y's are going to just cancel. So I'm going to have 3x plus 1x is 4x. That's 0 equals 4. See, I eliminated a variable because I just added them together, and then I'm left with that. Now, these are all three easy. Sometimes they're more tricky than that. We'll get into those in a minute. But divide by 4. So x is 1, right? So then, let's say that means that x is 1, so I've got my first part of my answer 1. And to figure out what y is, I just got to plug it in. Just plug it in either way. I would plug it in the easier one. I think this is an easier equation. So I plug in x is 1. So 1 plus 2y equals 0. And you solve that, and you're going to get negative 1 half. Because you would subtract 1, right? and then divide by 2, you get 2y equals negative 1, and so then y is equal to negative 1 half. Yeah? So we're, we're not going to do it right now, but if you wanted to know if you had the right answer, oh, sorry about that. There we go. If you wanted to know if you had the right answer or not, all you would do is take this x and this y and plug it into both. And if it was true for both, then you'd be good. In fact, I think some of the problems in the book, what they do is they give you a system of equations and they give you an, an ordered pair, and all they do is ask you if it's true or not, if that's the answer. So you just plug it in. Questions on that one, Ivan? No. Nope. All, all good so far? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Substitution literally means to substitute. Take one value and plug it in for another. And the giveaway is if it says y equals a number or x equals a number, then that makes it really, really easy, and you can substitute like that number right there. Since y is equal to 4, you can just plug it in right there. So then what we get is 3x plus 4 equals 7. So 3x would be 3, and x would be 1. So that's the first part of our answer is 1. Now, I don't want to give you the false impression that we always find x first. It doesn't matter. Sometimes you find y first. It just depends on how the problem is set up. All right, so then we just got to plug that in. Either place. Doesn't matter. Um, oh, well, I already know what y is. It's 4. Huh. I got the answer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's already 4. I don't need to plug in anything. It's 4. Yep, D-O-N-E finished. All right. And again, if you wanted to check it, you just plug that 1 in for x and the 4 for y, and it's true. 3 times 1 plus 4 is 7, so that's right. And then last one. The giveaway for graphs is if both equations are written in a way that makes them easy to graph. But this one is a, it's sometimes the easiest to do, but it's not very accurate. Because sometimes, like, if these were fractions or decimals, you'd have a hard time seeing that on a graph. Yeah. But... These are both easy to graph because they're in slope-intercept form. So let's do the first one, negative 1, the slope of 1 third, so up 1 and over 1, 2, 3. 
right there. Connect. Oh, oh, oh. Third time's a charm. Well, that is just horrible. This is why you don't do math and pen. Oh, I hate my life. If you want to draw a line between two points, what all you gotta do is with the first one, you start and then you just look at the second one and you go right, and you'll be pretty close. And the reason I missed this one is because I was drawing it from left to right. And because it's kind of in front of me, my hand was in front of the second dot. I couldn't see it. So I was guessing. True story. Whereas, check this out, Mr. Flowers. If you want to connect the two dots, if you, you could try this on your own. If you start here, you put your pen there, and you just like look at the next one, you go through it. But if you look where you're drawing, you're going to be like really off like all the time. If you look where your pen is, you'll be off. But if you look where you want to go, you'll be all right. Okay, that's a $10 tip. <laughs> All right. Last one. One, two, right? And then down two over three. Oh, it's right there. That one was easy. See, that one I could see where I was going, and I connected the dots. So right there, that coordinate, which is three, zero, is the answer. It's the x-intercept on this example. So that's it. Can we try another one of graphing? Of which? Of graphing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. Are you good with this so far, though? Not, not with the, not with the graphing method. <laughs> but with the other two, it's okay. I, um, I'm good with the other two, yeah. Okay. And I 